Hey everybody, welcome back to another Digital Making at Home bonus features video. Uh, this one is an add-on for the Story Generator project that I did with Zach earlier. If you haven't watched that project yet, I suggest you go back and build the Story Generator for yourself before you come and try this one. Uh, you don't have to, you could build the project the way that we're doing, but I'm going to show you how to change the project as it exists. I'm not going to step you through the whole project again. So it will probably be a lot simpler if you went away and built the project and then came back to this video to make it read out loud. It's a really easy thing to do, and we're going to use some cool stuff like extensions in this one. Uh, so follow along, watch the video. If you haven't made the project, again, I'd suggest you go and make it first. But it's a really simple thing to do. So I'm going to switch across to Scratch now and show you how we do it. So here's my code from previously, and we can see in the game, if I click on this guy, he says, Greetings, my name is Tor. What's your name? Okay, so it asks me to type my name. I pop that in. He reads it back to me. Welcome, Mr. C. Tap on my friend to generate a story. I tap on his friend, the centaur and his words come up on screen. So he's picking me a random story. They went to chop a night. It was amazing, the end. Okay, so that's my story. It's pretty cool, but this is all like a bit slow and static and not that interesting. So what I want to do is I'm gonna to go to these the extensions here and I can just click on text-to-speech and it adds these blocks here for me. Okay, so we see we get these sage or teal colored blocks here. And you see this one says speak, and it's kind of the same structure as a say, but it says speak instead. So what we want to do is work out how many of those we're going to need. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six say blocks. So I need six speak blocks in a row. Okay, so there's six. And they're all just going to say hello when I click them. So that's not really very interesting. Um, another thing that we can do with this now, okay, as soon as we have the same structure, let's line them up so you can see what I'm doing. Now I want to have this block in this top block where it says say I want it to speak. So I'm going to select that and I'll do control and C. So you hold control and tap C and it copies whatever you have selected. And I tap in this window down here where I want it to go and I hold control and I tap V and that pastes in the thing that I copied. So you can see this here is the same as this up here. Brilliant, that's exactly what I'm after. It's a little pro tip for you, control C, control V. Now the next bit we need to do is put the rest of these blocks in the next three ones down. So to do that, I right click or two fingers if you're on a Chromebook and I duplicate that block. Okay, now I could clip it straight in here, but it does a really irritating thing if I do that and it will read my whole code block. So I'll show you what happens if you do that and I'll show you the trick to getting around having to hear your code all the time. You could mute your computer so that it doesn't have the sound, uh, but you might forget to undo that. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how to do both ways. So if I just drop this in the hole now, it will read everything out, it'll be really irritating. Let me think. One magical morning, a strong dragon. Okay, so we don't need to go through the whole thing. In order to circumvent that, to stop that from happening, right click on your block and duplicate it and then just pop it on the table before you drag it and let it go in the hole and it doesn't do the reread. So right click, duplicate, on the table, drag into the third hole. So now you see I'm building exactly the same structure. The only thing it's doing is rather than saying it's going to speak for me. So I also grab this, again, control C in here, control V here, control C here, control Let me think. Oops, One magical v. morning a brave dragon. Okay, so I've got them in there, that's great. I've got my speak blocks, they're all in a row. I've got my say blocks here. And so I want to basically disconnect this from when Sprite clicked, because I don't want it to do this one anymore. I now want it to do my much cooler reading out loud thing. And so when I come over to my game, I can click on my centaur. Let me think. One magical morning, a brave sword. Went to see his friend, a strong dragon. They went to chase a sword. It was amazing. The end. Cool. So he reads it out to me nice and loud, but the voice I've got on there sort of sounds like Alexa. It's not very interesting. So if I put this set voice block in, set voice to alto is the one you just heard, but we have lots of different options in there. Tenor is kind of a man's voice. Squeak sounds like a fairy voice. And giant is probably my favorite one for this application because it sounds big and beefy. It's a really nice voice to read for a centaur. Um, if I had a fairy, I might use a different voice. I might use squeak. And the last one in the list is kitten. Uh, and that one's a bit silly. So I'll play that one for you at the end just as a demo because it's not very useful. It's just a bit of a joke that the developers have put in for people. So I'll set this to giant, make my game big, and when I click on this guy... Let me think. One magical boy got out of his shield. Went to see his friend the brave wizard. They went to chop a sword. It was amazing. The end. Cool. And so even though that's really cool, right? So I've got it reading out and I can choose my different voices. I think it's still a bit too static. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do another bonus features video for you guys, which shows you how to animate the centaur while he's talking. And we'll make sure that the animation times up with the story that he's reading so it doesn't look weird and janky. But that's another video, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The last thing we wanna do here is make sure that while our voice is good and it's reading all the things out that we wanna do, that's Brill, 
but we don't want it to have both of these going. Now you could add another events block here, okay? And so if you did want to read the story, you could push space and you have the story on screen. If you click on him, he'll say the story out loud. But remember that they're picking random words from lists. So if you space bar him and he says the story and then you click on him and he reads out the story, they'd probably be very different stories. You have different random words selected at each time. So we've got it there. Um, that's the program. That's about all you need to do to change him so you can read out loud. The next one, I'll show you how to make him move so that it looks like he's talking. So don't forget to submit your projects when they're finished, when you're happy with them, submit them to rpf.io slash home, which is where we've got all of our digital making at home resources. And uh, remember to have a look at some of the other projects. And just because we're not all together in the same place doesn't mean we can't work together to make cool stuff. So keep making stuff, guys. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll see you on our next video. Catch you later. Bye.